Hey, good evening, everybody. It is 7 o'clock, Thursday evening. Happy Friday Eve, as I love to say. Um, I see some wonderful people have already joined. Good evening, Linda. Billy Joe, I haven't seen you in forever. Howdy. Donna Kay, there you are. I see you. Um, Mindy Smith, I'm glad you're here with us tonight. It is a happy, happy Thursday. Um, this is, can you believe it? This is our absolutely last lesson. Um, this is it. We've made it 12 weeks. Tonight is lesson 12. Um, those of you that have been faithful every week, God bless you. Um, thank you for joining in. Always appreciate that. It's good to see the comments that I see when they pop up and the likes and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Um, again, tonight is lesson 12. Um, and as I have been posting, I do upload these videos to um, YouTube every week. So when we're done, I always upload them to YouTube and uh, to my YouTube channel and then all as well. So if you ever want to go back and uh, hear me ramble, they're there. And um, God has been good to us through this study. I pray it's been a blessing over these last three months, um, three months uh, that we've been going through our Bible study. Um, tonight, a little bit more somber than most of our studies just due to the subject matter what we're studying. Um, God is still good. And it's still his word. And so we will still talk about his word. Amen. So as we get started, let's go before the Lord in prayer and um, we'll start Bible study tonight. Pray with me. Thank you, wonderful Jesus, for all that you've done. Thank you for 12 weeks, Jesus, that you have just been taking the time to spend with us, to talk to us, to convict us, to challenge us, and to encourage us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray that you would bless everybody that joins live and watches later. May your name be glorified be magnified in this place. Even tonight, Lord, speak to us, Jesus, and we'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. My cousin James hopped on. Howdy, James. Long time no see. It's been too long. My sister and I need to make a trip down to Kentucky and see y'all. Um, God bless you. Let's go ahead. And get started with Bible study. So, subject that people love or hate or love to hate talking about. <laughs> the tribulation. The first little thing we're going to talk about is Daniel's 70 weeks. Now, the slide says the 17th. 70th. Can I say that right? Seven. Yeah. 70th week. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, the Bible does talk about a vision that Daniel had about 70 weeks. But when we talk about end times, when we talk about tribulation, what we're talking about is the final judgment of God as revealed in Scripture. Our starting off point will be Daniel, who, as we've we said last week and we've said in other weeks, that he was a good prophet, a great prophet during the Babylonian captivity of the Jews. Um, and he recorded a period of time, the end times, that would really just bring absolute calamity um, on the earth. He described 70 weeks or 70 periods of time that would relate to Jewish history. Um, what we have to keep in mind is that this Jewish history was really, it, it didn't really touch the church age, which we live now in, but it was talking about 
Jewish future. Um, his prophecies really truly do concern the state of Jews in God's end time plan. Now, in the vision that God gave Daniel, it was a it was a vision, a time frame of 70 weeks. So I'm going to show our slide here again because I want to kind of talk about um, this time frame. There's there's this little time frame here at the bottom of the slide that kind of talks about um, those 70 weeks. And so I kind of want to um, go over that. And as I read the scripture, so just hang tight because I want I want you to see this. As I'm reading, Daniel was told in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Um, 69 of those weeks were to take place between the decree to restore Jerusalem right here um, until the crucifixion of the Messiah. That's what this time frame here is actually talking about. Um, seven weeks of this time frame were used or 49 years if you consider that uh, each time period was a period of seven years um, 49 years to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem um, that left 62 weeks or 434 years from the rebuilding of the walls until the crucifixion of the Messiah but that's using um, a biblical definition of a year which is 360 Days. That leaves one week remaining of the 70 weeks that Daniel saw. And from what we understand is that this um, this last week really um, represents the great tribulation, the time frame that the Antichrist would rule and reign on the earth. When we talk about Daniel's 70th week, his, his last week, we're talking about that tribulation period, that time where what we call, the scripture calls, the Antichrist will rule and reign over the world. So let's talk about the judgments in the, during the tribulation. Um, so let me show my slide one more time. We're going to talk about the seals trumpets, the vials, and then finally, the terrible death. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? But the tribulation time is not meant to be happy time. Um, so as I said when we started, this is not a fun, praise God lesson. This is very sobering material when we consider that God is going to bring judgment on this earth. The scripture tells us that evil people um, will bring calamities upon the earth. God will pour out severe judgment during this time. Um, and they are devastating events that are recorded in Revelate in the book of Revelations. And um, we talk about the seals, the trumpets, and the vials. So let me just go very quickly over what is contained in the seals, the trumpets, in the vials and the scripture tells us that there are seven seals that lead into seven trumpets that lead into seven vials. Let's talk about those. The seals, um, Revelations chapter six and chapter eight um, reveal the following. There will be an evil leader who is usually called the Antichrist that will win the world to himself. There will be terrible war followed by famine and death. One fourth of the world's population will die. There will be much persecution of people who turn to God during this time. Um, catastrophic earthquakes will disturb the earth. The moon, the scripture tells us, will become like blood and people will hide in fear. Sobering time. And we get to the seven trumpets as described in Revelations 8 and 9. During these judgments, there will be hail, and fire um, that will burn over a third of the earth. Uncontrollable fires. Fires. A falling meteor will fall on one third of the rivers. Fish of the sea will die. One third of the sea will become blood. Um, poisons will contaminate one third of the water supply, and many will die because of that. There will be great darkness that 
comes over the world. There are, for five months, scorpions will sting people on the earth. And I thought today, I wonder, um, because John saw all of this and it was very symbolic what he saw in the book of Revelations. And I wondered, was that murder hornets? I don't know. Um, he described them as scorpions. An army of 200 million people will kill one third of the population. This is not civil time. That leads us to the seven vials. These vials represent God's final judgments for the tribulation. There will be sores that will come upon those that accept the mark of the beast, those that follow the Antichrist. They will pledge their allegiance to him. They will have sores on their bodies. Everything in the ocean will die. Water will all become blood. The sun will burn so hot that it will scorch people literally to death. The earth will be thrown into darkness and great pain will come upon people. Um, the river Euphrates will dry up so that the armies of the world can actually gather in a place called uh, Megiddo. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Hail will fall, destroying whole cities. Do you hear that? Death. Terrible death. Terrible destruction. And just as sure as I'm sitting here at my kitchen table, it will happen. The fourth seal. The fourth of the seven seals. One fourth of the earth's population will die. I checked the population of the earth. And as of 2018, it was 7.5 billion people. So if you round that up, so by now, roughly eight billion people on the earth now if one fourth of those people die that is two billion people that will die from the fourth seal in the sixth trumpet one third of the remaining population will die that's another two billion people Sobering thoughts. Thoughts that I pray make you think. This is not going to be a good time in our Earth's history. Let's go on to our next slide. We're going to talk about the rain the Antichrist. I'm going to talk a little bit about him. There is going to be a forceful political leader. The scripture calls the Antichrist. You and I, um, man of the son of perdition, the scripture also calls him, that will come forth and will dominate world leadership during this tribulation time. He will have an awful lot of help with someone called the false prophet who will be a religious leader um, that walks along and rules alongside of the Antichrist. The world system um, of government under one head will cover political, religious, and economic life. This is total domination by this one world Let's talk about the Antichrist that is called the son of perdition, the, the man of sin. He will completely and totally oppose God. He will exalt himself actually above God. Um, he will sit in the temple and because he says he's higher than God, he will proclaim himself to be the God. Um, but he will be destroyed by the Lord Jesus at Armageddon. Satan will empower him with signs and wonders. He'll be able to do mighty acts, lying wonders. He will deceive those that do not love the truth. And then God is going to allow those that do not love the truth, that are deceived by the Antichrist, they'll believe a lie. And they will be damned. All if we do not love the truth, we will be deceived. 
those that do not love the truth will be destroyed. I want to build my life upon truth. The truth of the word of God. Let politics do what politics are going to do. Ain't talking about that. Let religions even do what religions are going to do. I'm talking about any kind of denominations here. I'm talking about the truth of the word of God. My life, your life needs to be built upon that truth. Otherwise, we will be deceived. And I have prayed that that not happen to any of you. I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to have to deal with the punishments that are coming at the end of this age. When we talk about the Antichrist, we must also talk about um, the false prophet, religious leader that's going to work alongside the Antichrist. But let me let me talk a little bit more. I need to I need to step back. Revelation 13 talks about the Antichrist as um, being empowered by Satan. Uh, there will be a one world system government in some sense the revival of the old roman empire we talked about that last week daniel's ten toed kingdom uh people will worship the beast they'll worship um this one world leader he will have complete power for three and a half years um he will blaspheme god his name and the heavenly dwellers he will make war against those who turn to god during his time to cause all to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. And the only way that they can buy or sell is if they have that mark. And y'all, that mark means that the persons that receive that mark will have pledged allegiance and will say that they will worship that Antichrist. The Bible talks about the number of his name being 603 score and 6666. Six, six, six. Uh, uh, the number six is the number of man. And, and it being tripled just really means that the strength of the power of man is going to be seen during this time. Then we talk about the false prophet, prophet a religious leader um, that in the tribulation that's going to work closely with the Antichrist. Um, this is an interesting um, person to me because... If we look at our Western world anyway, not necessarily Eastern, the Eastern world is still very religious, but the Western world is seems to be more and more anti-religious. And the very fact that there will be a religion, a one world religion um, just kind of amazes me in our Western culture because we've just so denounced religion and God and, and, and worship of God. Um, but there will be a one world religious system as well as governmental system. And this uh, prophet, this false prophet um, will exercise great power. He's the one that's going to make people actually worship the Antichrist and submit to that one world system. He will perform miracles and signs that are powered by Satan, certainly not by God. He will be a deceiver. The Bible says that he will set up an image of the Antichrist and he will cause that image to be able to talk and to watch people. It doesn't sound too far-fetched today. I remember as a as a young girl hearing about um, how the Antichrist is going to be able to watch you and, and see everything that you're doing. Well, that's not too that's not too far fetched anymore. I mean, look at what we're doing tonight. I am on my computer with my camera, and you are seeing everything that I'm saying and doing right here. It's not that far-fetched. Have you got Skype? Um, have you got Zoom? Uh, you can see what other people are doing and interact. Not that far-fetched, y'all. Certainly, our technology has caught up with biblical prophecy. Interesting, isn't it? Not only do we need to talk about the false prophet and the Antichrist, let's talk a little bit about um, that political system, that political government that's actually going to take place in the end time. When we talked about Daniel's vision, or actually Nebuchadnezzar's vision um, last week, we talked about a confederation of 10 nations um, that will constitute a world power where the Antichrist will rise up and will take control of that um, that ten-toed 
nation, that ten-toed kingdom. Their authority, the, the authority of the ten nations will lessen as the Antichrist begins to take more and more power. And as he gains rule over the world, this economic block that he will have control over will be dominated by that world religion that we were just talking about. Revelation 17 also talks about a harlot, that one world religious system that will become drunk, as Revelation says, with the blood of the saints. That harlot will ride the beast, the, the Antichrist. She will be right along with the beast until the beast decides to destroy her at some point in time. You think religious persecution is bad now. It's going to be worse. There's terrible times coming. That made me ask a question as I was going over this lesson. It made me ask, and, and I don't understand everything about end time prophecy. I'm not here trying to promote myself as um, somebody who knows all about it. I, there's arguments of when the church is going to be raptured. Is it going to be before the tribulation happens? Is it going to be in the middle of the tribulation? Is it going to be at the end? I, I, I don't know enough about all of that to sit here and say definitively, this is when the rapture of the church is going to take place. But what I do know is that you and I, as living for the Lord Jesus Christ, we have got to be so sold out to the truth of the word of God that if it comes down to that, are you and I willing to lay down our lives for the cause of Christ? I told you, this is a sobering lesson. Are we willing to put our lives in the line for the truth of the word of God? I can't make that decision for you. You've got to make that decision for yourself. Pray you make the right one. The next slide that we're going to talk about is the Battle of Armageddon. So let's talk about preparation for Armageddon. Let's talk about where that is, what's going to actually happen at that battle. Um, the, there's a valley in Israel called the Valley of Jezreel. It's located just west of the Jordan and east of the Mediterranean. So it's just smack dab in that, that little area. Um, the Battle of Armageddon will be fought there. It's, uh, there's a city there called Megiddo. This has been a, a very major city uh, throughout biblical history. Um, this city was fortified by um, Solomon back in the day. Um, and so when we talk about Armageddon, we're talking Armageddon. That's where we get our word Armageddon, that, that it's going to be near that city, the valley near the city of Megiddo. That, that's where that last battle is going to be fought. Armageddon has been said to be the battleground that the greatest bloodbath that the world has ever seen. This is not pretty, y'all. Armageddon. The Bible tells us that even though the Antichrist is going to gain world power, the Jews will resist. Israel will resist. And because of that, they will be a thorn in the Antichrist's side. He will be able to control everything and everybody pretty much except for the Jews and what he is going to do. He is going to determine his best to try to destroy them. And in order to destroy them, he's going to gather the, the leaders of his government and their armies to come together to battle against Israel in this valley. Armageddon, Armageddon, last battle. This last battle is what's going to close out the time of the tribulation. It will be the final attack of the Antichrist against God and against his people. But God will come. He will come. He promised that he would come and end that wild, savage 
reign of the beast and his system. See, it's interesting to me. The Antichrist is going to be able to persuade the armies to gather against Israel. He's going to persuade them that it's going to be something like World War III. It's going to be the final battle, the battle to end all battles somehow. Uh, they're going to be deceived. This is not going to be a heavenly battle against God and, and, and his people. It's going to be a battle against Israel. And yet this is the time that God is going to step in. And we, we know we know that that passage from from Thessalonians, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet. And he's going to he's going to battle against the enemy, against the Antichrist. And once this battle is won, because I'm telling you, it will be won. Jesus Christ will set up his millennial reign and rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years of peace. So it's bad, y'all. And when it's bad, it's really bad. But when it's good, it's really good. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will rule. He will reign. When it's bad, it ain't over. John says, and I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth, he doth judge and make war. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen. That's us that are saved. Praise God, white and clean. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of lords jesus will come with his church and will end the reign of the beast and will destroy his world system it ain't over until jesus says that it's over and i am oh so glad at the end of that battle y'all there will be judgment against the beast and his false prophet. The scripture says in Revelations 19 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Y'all, I want to be on the winning side. I want to be on the winning side. I want you to be on the winning side. Because the end of the losing side is more than just losing a battle. about losing their life let's wrap this up just a little bit shall we let's talk about the great white throne judgment revelations chapter 20 describes that final judgment of the world the great white throne judgment as it has been called will be a judgment of all the dead from the beginning of time until the end um, and it will be there. God will judge all people living and dead with the exception of the righteous. Now, the righteous will be judged. The Bible does tell us, talk about the judgment seat of Christ, where those that um, will rule and reign will cry with Christ, their deeds will be judged. They will have made it to heaven. They will have made it to live with the Lord for eternity. Um, there, there will be judgment for the saints, but it's more judgment of uh, what rulership is going to look like. Uh, it's not about whether they're going to go to heaven or hell um, because they will have already made it. Um, but the great white throne judgment is for all the earth. Um, John said in Revelation 20, and I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. He's talking about during the reign of, of the, the Antichrist. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened. Let's talk about that throne. John saw an impressive throne. But let's talk about who was on that throne. The Bible tells us that there is a judge, one judge that sits on that throne. There's only one God and his name is Jesus. And that one God is going to rule and reign he will be the final judge. He will be the final judge. Aren't you glad it's Jesus? I mean, if I'm going to fall in the hands of a judge, I want it to be Jesus because he's just and merciful and righteous. 
There's the throne, there's the judge, and then there is the judged. People from all walks of life will be judged, regardless of how they died, regardless of what was going on in their life. They will be judged. Now, no judge is going to judge you and pronounce any kind of judgment without some kind of evidence. There will be evidence. The Bible says that the books, plural, were opened. And another book, which is the book of life. When we talk about these books, what are we talking about? We're talking about, first and foremost, the Word of God, the Bible, the book on which our lives should be built, what we should be living our lives according to. The Bible will be open. That is part of our judgment. Did you line up to what the Word says? There's going to be a recorded history of every person's life, those things that you've said in secret, those things that you've thought in secret, those things that you've not repented over. Um, those things that you've done openly are all recorded in a book. The book of your recorded history will also be open. And then finally, the book of life, the life, the, the book that contains those that are going to receive their heavenly reward, the book of life, those that are going to be brought into life will be written in that book. And if your name is not found in that book, you will not receive eternal life. Sobering. Where's your name written? There will be witnesses to this judgment. The scripture would tell us that the church, the saved, will be present with the Lord Jesus during this um, judgment, this time of judgment. And finally, the judgment itself. This is where um, my heart hurts. Those that are not written in the book of life will be cast into an eternal lake of fire. The lake of fire, what you and I would commonly refer to as hell, is real. People will really be thrown into an eternal, literal burning lake. During this Bible study, I've talked an awful lot about salvation. I've talked an awful lot about God's love and his mercy and his grace. I, but to keep it balanced, to tell you the truth. I have to tell you about his wrath. Everyone will not go to heaven. There will be those that will be condemned to hell. There really is judgment coming. Unless we're saved according to the scriptures, we will not see Jesus face to face for eternity. God doesn't send people to hell. You and I choose. We have a choice whether we obey the word or we don't. And those that choose not to really will go to hell. Those that choose to follow him will be with him for eternity. I cannot stress the importance of what I'm saying. I can't stress it enough. We're not living just to live here and die. There is judgment coming. I don't want you to be judged to an eternity without God because that's really what the judgment is. It's a, it's a, it's a time without God. Decide to follow the Lord today. He loves you. 
Let's talk about what happens after judgment. The time after the white throne judgment is not really described in detail. We just know that time will end and eternity, as you and I understand it, will begin. The Bible says that after the judgment, that the earth will be engulfed in flames. The day of the Lord will come and, and will consume the world. Everything that human can, humankind has made on the earth will be destroyed. Everything that has been set into orbit in outer space will be obliterated. It'll, it'll be gone. The earth and the heavens will be completely purged, this time by fire. You remember in Noah, in Noah's day, how the Lord purged the world with the flood and promised that he would never do it again with water, but a fire would purge the world at the end of the age. Everything is going to be destroyed. Don't put your hope in what's in this world. It's going to be destroyed. Put your hope in things eternal. After the earth is destroyed, the Bible says that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. You see, God says, I got to clean this up. Man, there's, there's been so much destruction and death and disease and horrific things. I got to clean this world up because I'm going to rule a perfect world. I'm going to reign in a perfect place. So God recreates the world. That's called the new heaven and the new earth. We can't talk about that without talking about the new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. Revelations 21 talks about that new Jerusalem, how John saw the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, adorned as a bride for her husband. Let me read it to you. Revelations 21 2. And I, John, saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there, you may be also. These beautiful images, despite the, the destruction of the tribulation, despite the horrific reign really of Satan incarnate on this world. In the end, God will rule and he will reign and it will be a reign of beauty. It will be a reign of marvelous things. When we talk about the new Jerusalem, the Bible says it's going to be something like 1,500 miles um, in length, breadth, and height. The pure square, really, um, made of pure gold like glass with walls of jasper and gates of pearl. No power plants are going to be needed, y'all. Jesus will be the power and the light um, with that. No no need for Duke Energy or IPL. And Jesus is going to be the IPL, all right? Uh, God will be the light and the power in that time frame. And at that point in time, time and eternity will meet. The, the, the temporal will cease forever. The, the hope of the righteous for ages will finally be consummated. We, we are going to get to live with our Lord for forever. What an amazing hope that we have if we follow the truth of the word of God. Yeah, it's going to be bad. Tribulation is going to be ugly, but I can't leave us there. Even though it's a sobering conversation, even though it's hard sometimes to hear that there is going to be people, there is a real hell. There is a real hell to shun and there really is a real heaven to gain. I can tell you that those that purpose in their lives to gain Jesus, those that seek him, those that walk with him, those, mm, I'm feeling like a preacher now, those that want to walk with the Lord Jesus in this life will get to see him face to face for eternity is a reward that we cannot deny. But that was in my
my in my reading this morning, I I was reading the book of Joel. It's only three chapters. It's really short, really short book. So and I've got time. It's early, early, early. Um, according to my clock, it is 20 till eight. And I still got 20 minutes. I won't keep you the whole 20 minutes, but I still got it. So um, I'm going to my poor tattered Bible. Uh, pulled up my Bible because there's too much to read and I couldn't type it all out in my notes. But listen to this. Listen, listen. Joel chapter two. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness, and of gloominess, a day of clouds, of thick darkness. And as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. And the land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape. I mean, it's just talking about all this crazy dis- um, destruction that's going to happen. But check, check, check this out. This is so cool. As I was listening, I was like, oh, Jesus, listen to the context of this. When we talk about end time tribulation, when we talk about end time trouble, listen to what Joel says is going to happen in the end time. This is so cool. Listen, listen, listen. Um, I've got to get to the right verse here. Um, Therefore also now saith the Lord, verse 12, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rent your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness who repenteth him of the evil, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. I I posted those verses earlier today because they just so struck me. After all of the destruction that is going to be sent, God really wants people to come and to repent before him. That's the whole point. The the destruction, the the vials, the trumpets, the uh, the seals. God is trying to call people to repentance. That's the whole point of the judgment. It's not so God can destroy things, and so God can call people to repentance. But listen, listen, this is so steep. This is this is awesome. This is awesome. You keep going on in Joel chapter two, and man, I got all su- all excited. You get all all the way to verse twenty eight, and it shall come to pass afterward. After what? After the after the terrible. Things are going to happen during the tribulation after people repent, after people turn to God. Listen, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in heaven. God promises that if we will repent. If we will turn from our wicked ways, regardless of what is going on in the world. So can I bring to bear what has been happening in our nation lately? And again, I'm I'm not going to wax political. I'm just bringing this for a particular point. Regardless of the riots, regardless of the statues that are being torn down, regardless of the anarchy and the chaos going on in our country, regardless of the political upheaval that is going on all the way around us. I've told y'all before, I feel like every time I open up Facebook or talk or think about our world, I feel like I'm reading the book of Revelations, man. People are angry and and just rebelling against what is going on in our nation. And again, I'm not waxing political, left, right, whatever. I don't care. But what I'm saying is, regardless of all the destruction, murder hornets, the sand that's that, that's coming, for, you know, this weekend here in Indiana, dear Lord in heaven, will it ever stop? You know, regardless of what is going on in our world, if God's people, if the people of this world will turn and will repent, God promises to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He is not prejudiced in any way, shape, or form. He will call you to himself regardless of who you are, what you've done, where you are, or where you're going. If we will repent and turn to him, God promises to pour out his spirit on the young and on the old, on the servants and on the rulers. God promises to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That is the hope that we have, regardless of the tribulation that's around us, regardless of what tribulation may happen with the Antichrist, and it will happen. But regardless of that, when people turn to the Lord and when they repent, y'all, God will pour out his spirit as a blessed hope. 
That gets me excited about end times. Now, I told y'all last week, and I still stand firm upon it. I'm not scared. Tribulation doesn't scare me because I know who I serve. I know who I walk with. I know my relationship with the Lord, and it's a good one. Most days. I know my Jesus. I ain't scared. Are you? Listen. Technically, that's the end of the lesson. Technically, that's the end of the study. I've got to ask you, where do we go from here? I've been telling you multiple times throughout this three months to check your heart. Do you and I align our lives with the truth of Scripture? Have we fully followed God's plan of salvation as we've talked about in depth, have we truly, completely, and fully repented of our sins? Now, that's not just being caught and saying, I'm sorry because I was caught. But that's actually a life change. I no longer want to do the things that I were, I've i done because that brings a reproach upon the name of Jesus. I'm walking away from that. Have we fully repented? Have we gone down into a baptismal tank? been baptized in the beautiful, wonderful, precious, saving, holy, miraculous name of Jesus. Has his name been applied to our lives in baptism? Have we been filled with the awesome, precious, amazing gift of God's spirit evidenced by speaking in tongues? Where God fills us with himself. And are we living according to the word of God? Are we living holy, separated, righteous lives according to his scripture? Are we walking daily with him? Are we daily in prayer? Are we daily in the word? Are we seeking his face daily? If we're not, we got good news. we got a chance. we got time. Time is not too late for you to be saved. What an awesome privilege to come to the Lord, to turn in repentance and say, Jesus, I'm not going to live the way I used to live. I'm going to come before you and I'm going to walk with you. I can live with you for eternity. What an amazing thought. So I offer this to you. As I have been offering throughout this study. You need to talk. You need to pray. Reach out to me. Find me on Facebook Messenger. I'm not always good about answering immediately, but I try. If you've got my number, text me, call me. We'll make a way. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, we'll make a way. If you're ready to fully repent of your sins, we'll pray. See, that's really the point that I, I, that's the whole reason why I did the Bible study. That's it. So that people would come to the Lord. So that people that have walked with the Lord maybe would straighten up their walk if it needed to be. God is good, y'all. And he's calling all of us to that deeper walk with him. Just to walk with him means everything to me. Just to know he's near, his hand is a leading me. Though the world pass me by. Oh, their way, let me be just to walk with him means everything to me. I mean everything to you. He's coming soon. This world's winding up. We're at the end, y'all. choice is yours. I love you. I've enjoyed doing this Bible study. 
I pray it's encouraged you. I pray it's challenged you. I pray it's convicted you. I pray you've heard truth and have received truth. Thank you for all those that have joined. I've seen some names tonight. Brother Seaman, I don't know if you're still on, but praise the Lord. Sister Beverly, hello. It's good to see you. Um, Sister Lily, glad you're watching. Um, Sarah, I hope you're still on. God bless you. Praying for you and your church. Time of loss. Marlene, I hope you're still watching. Will you pray with me? This is our last chance to pray together on Facebook Live. I don't know if I'm going to do another Bible study or not. Um, but I certainly have enjoyed doing this one. If you want more, you need to let me know. Um, as of right now, I'm not planning on doing anything. But, uh, let me know. I've certainly enjoyed our time together. Pray with me, will you? Wonderful Jesus. Oh, God, how we love you. Thank you, God, for truth. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, God, that despite the judgment that's coming, you've made a way. You've made a way of escape. You've made a plan of salvation. And I'm so grateful. Because as God, you don't have to make any way whatsoever. You made a way. And oh, how I praise you. God. Those that have been saved according to your word, Lord, would you stir them up? Because time is winding close. Those that have not fully obeyed your plan of salvation, Jesus, would you convict their hearts and draw them to you? Let your name be glorified, for you're worthy. There is nobody like. And I love you. Thank you for this time together. Bless my friends, my brothers and my sisters. Keep them safe, Lord. Thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, I bless you.